order. Thank you <clears throat> everyone for coming to the August 3rd City Council meeting. Fran, would you please do the roll call? Councilmember Graywall. Present. Fitzgerald. Present. Nat Fig. Present. Sausado. Present. Bynum. Harvey. Spread. Present. Thank you, Fran. Thank you. Will you all please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again for coming out on this lovely weather evening. We're going to move along on tonight's agenda. We're on number four, communication from citizens. And I understand that we have Jamie, help me say the last name. Saragoza. Thank you. Concerning the removal of your dog, could you please come to the podium and say your name and address? My name is Jaime Adan Zaragoza. 118, 118 West 9th Street, Muscatine, Iowa, 52761. Thank you. How can we help you? Just came come to, to ask that my dog not be uh, barred from Muscatine anymore than he is now. Uh, it, was, it was totally my fault. I, I, I knowingly had taken him out and I, I knew he had uh, recently or not recently but a year prior he uh, grabbed my next door neighbor's arm and his first reaction was to pull away and at that point it was a bite you know so then I uh, I took I took him out but at knowing that I took him out with with my other three uh, other two uh, German Shepherds, Leah and Tinkerbell. Uh, uh, Tinkerbell is the, uh, the daughter of Diesel and Leah. And uh, I, I took them out and I, was, I didn't want anybody to pet my dog, so I, in my voice I had tension and I, I quickly said no to this girl that asked to pet the dog. And she came came around the corner, I believe it was on 7th Street in Mulberry. She came around where I didn't, didn't see her coming because it was on a, a hill in the way. I didn't see her coming, so I wasn't able to cross the street. And uh, she, she came and she turned right into us. And I was startled and the dogs were startled. And I just, she asked, first thing she asked, can I pet the dogs? I was like, no, he, uh, he, he may bite. And... Uh, so I tell that to anybody just for that simple fact that he has already grabbed my my next door neighbor and uh, so I told I told her no he, he may bite and so then I proceeded to keep walking away keep walking away and uh, pulling them along and then her her I would say someone she knew was riding along with her came down the same street that she came down on the, that she did not turn on she came and blocked me, so I was I was cornered into a position where I could not get away, other than going, actually going into the the street itself of the driving. So I was I was literally stuck, and so my dog basically just turned into a protector. So he he was protecting me, and I once once that girl the other girl passed in front of me, oh, and then he he. He did nothing. He did nothing. He didn't bark at her. He didn't snarl at her. He did. He didn't. He didn't lunge at her. You know, it's just the fact of having to uh, retreat from the other girl coming down. It was, it was just that fact that he had enough room to get to this girl and uh, snip at her. I mean, he is not a violent dog. I've had I've had countless kids and their parents and their friends in my house, and uh, they they've. They've left their infants, child, toddlers with the dog, you know, and I, while I'm outside or whatnot. And uh, I've never had an incident with, with Diesel ever harming a child of any sort. And, uh, you know, I mean, he, he is a very 
big basis of my um, sobriety. You know, 10 years ago, I quit. You know, as of October uh, 10th, this year will be seven years. And for the last six years, uh, it will be 10 years, or it will be seven years, but Diesel's is only six. But I've, I've had him just about as long as I've been sober. And, you know, uh, not, not too many people know about people in recovery that they go through a lot of changes, especially with their friends and places. So they don't, they don't have so many people knocking at their doors or calling them up, hey, let's go do this, let's go do that, you know. And uh, with Diesel and Leah, they were always there, you know, always had something to do. I mean, at any given time, I could go take, the, take them for a walk. I mean, they were always up for it, you know. And, uh, you know, and I mean, not, not only doing things, getting me out of the house, he, he, they also show you love. I mean, they're, they are, they do bond with somebody, you know, and, and Diesel, me and I always, I mean, just, we were buddies at first, you know, and now since, uh, since he was the father of the, the nine litter of, from Leah, I mean, he's my daddy Diesel now, you know, and he, he's the husband of my Leah, Leah Love the Third, you know, and uh, so I, I had to, I, I, I had a family, a, a family after, after becoming sober, I've had a family, because I just moved out to Muscatine to get away from things and start a whole, whole new life, you know, and when Han gave me this job, you know, I was overwhelmed, and I, I just like, okay, a fresh start from everything. And I came here, got, got this, had this great job, and um, finally, finally in my life, I was able to set down roots, bought a house here in Muscatine. And uh, I, uh, I, I, I learned everything out of not drinking, get my life back together and get my life in order, and everything but love and, and appreciation of someone other than myself. And that, that's what Diesel and Leah brought to me. And then Tinkerbell adding on to a whole family system that we've had. You know, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I, I'll, I, will, I will spend time in jail if, if need to be to, to let my son come home. You know, I mean, he's, he's part of my family here. You know, it's... It's, uh, Thank you, sir, for coming. We appreciate your honesty, and we congratulate you on your sobriety. Thank you. Does council have anything that they would like to ask? One, <clears throat> one question. Did, how seriously was the kid hurt? Sir, honestly, when I walked, when I walked away from her, it, it, it just looked red. It didn't, it didn't look to be... Okay. Uh, it, I, I know he didn't get the full jaw. It was just the, the, front, the front teeth of a narrow nip mm -hmm. you know it, w it was nothing he held on to or it, it was it was nothing more than a, a nip and the that sun that sunday didn't, didn't didn't hear nothing that monday didn't hear nothing until tuesday is when uh i heard that they took her to emergency room you know because it was an open wound or oh, whatever oh, it was an open wound? that's what that's what they said I, I i didn't see it there was there was there was nothing there and you know i mean I, like I said, I immediately got out of that, uh, out of that being cornered by the other child, you know. So I, I looked at it and I, I asked her, "You okay?" She goes, "Yeah, I'm fine." And she, she, uh, she takes her hand and wipes it and says, "It's nothing," and and walks away. We have the animal control officer here tonight, as well as Chief Talkington. If you have questions uh, for the police department, so this is the the this second is time? The second bite, then. Yes, sir. Okay, because I. I caught, I, I knew you said they got a hold of the neighbor, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that, it, that he had nipped at one of these other kids. So I, I must just have. Just one of the two. I must have one of the that. two kids, <laughs> not both of the kids. Later. Yeah, okay. I have a question. Have you ever considered one of these harnesses that where they kind of. Sir, I, 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 do, I, I do have another plan and schedule if, if I allowed Diesel back into the uh, home residence. I have. Uh, Decided I've, I've already gone to my employer and I have changed from first shift to second shift that where my my walking hours would be any time where 
a kid would be in school, which the most people that ask to pet the dog is, if I could go from, uh, it'd be anywhere from before, my hours would be from 2 to 10 or from 2 to 12. So my, my time of walking would be where there would hardly be anybody out, either they are at work or, you know, the, the kids are at school or at a daycare or whatever. And then, uh, then uh, Diesel would also be uh, w wearing a, a muzzle anytime he'd uh, leave the front door or the backyard at any given reason, even if in the, even in a car ride, on a chance he'd get out of the car before I would. And so uh, then uh, I also decided uh, if, if, I, if he'd be able to come home that uh, I'd, I'd make a shirt that would say N no so I wouldn't have to ask or they wouldn't have to ask and that it would say no, please do not ask but uh, please keep your distance or w w whatever the council would recommend. You know, I, I, I'd do anything, you know. So do we, do we enforce any sort of fines of any sort normally on the first or second bites or anything like that or do we just say, hey, the dog's out and that's it? Come on up to the podium. I don't, know what, I, I don't remember. I've read that section before, but I don't remember. I, I mean, I see the chapter ordinances and, and whatnot, but <clears throat> I have no idea how we are addressing that. I'll introduce you. Okay. <laughs> this is the animal control officer, uh, Nicole, Ashby. Nicole Ashby. I always get it <laughs> mixed up with the last one we had, so I call her all kinds of names, but <laughs> usually it's a good, yeah, it's a senior moment, you're right. <laughs> anyway, she can answer some of your questions for you. Um, again, this is the second time that the dog's bitten. Uh, she has some information on the child that was bitten on this. I think there was four puncture wounds on her arm. So I'll let Ashley take this. Or Nicole, I'm sorry. <laughs> Boy, I do this at work, you too. You always do that. So, let's let her, let's let let her, her talk. talk, and then we'll okay. let you come back up after. Um, I know someone had addressed the severity of the bite on the child. Um, I can give you that information here. So... The bite happened on the 9th of last month. Um, it was on a 16-year-old female riding her bike um, around Mulberry and East 7th Street. There were four puncture wounds, redness and swelling um, from the area to where the dog bit her. Um, it looks like here that it was the left calf in the knee area. So it's actually her leg. Uh, not her arm, but um, that's just what the officer had, who took the report, had gone out to the hospital, the emergency room, and that's what he viewed on the individual was the four puncture wounds, redness, and swelling from the bite of the dog. Um, let's see. The other, the other, I don't know, are you guys interested in the other I, guy? I, or? Please. Okay. My question just the officer looked at the wound or it's they're reporting what the doctor and nurses staff said of the so wound. when when somebody is admitted into the emergency room for a dog bite an off the dispatch is automatically called they're required to do that um, an officer is sent out as quickly as they can get there um, there is stuff that is priority over that so sometimes the individual has already left um, so they just gather the information that they have gotten from the healthcare professionals. Um, but generally speaking, when you respond out to the hospital, you're in the room with the individual taking the report. So it could have come from documents that the healthcare professionals had done, and it also could have come from viewing it. I'm assuming, based on what he has written, that it was viewed. She, sorry. <laughs> um, so the other individual was an adult male. Um, his neighbor, he was, let's see, I think he was at the time. I don't know if you, if you care to know that or not. Um, the dog, all three of the dogs were loose on that occasion. Um, I pulled up two, three very large German Shepherds um, out loose. Um, two stayed in the yard. I exited my vehicle, and the male German Shepherd involved in both bites actually came into the street. He didn't bite me or anything like that, um, but he was at my backside and the individual that got bit said get up here get up here onto his porch and I just 
picked my arms up and said, get back, get back, and he, he went back to his yard. Nothing happened, um, but there was skin break on that individual as well um, on his arm, and I did see that. It was bleeding, um, and I think he actually got nipped on the butt as well. Um, he told me that information later on uh, when I had followed up with him. When was that? That was... That was on um, June 9th, 2016, so they were almost a year apart. I want to be clear. When you went up to the house, all, one dog was loose or three, three. were all loose? He has loose. three German Shepherds, and he had a Yorkie at the time as well. Um, the Yorkie was not loose, but the, all three German Shepherds were loose. Um, the two females were just laying in the front yard <laughs> when I got up there. Um, and then, like I said, the male did come into the street towards me across the road and across the sidewalk into the individual's yard once again. And he was up on his porch at that time. But there is a fence at, at, his, at his house? Yes, yes. yes. Um, there was some damage to the fence that he did fix. Um, he appropriately fixed, and there, were, there was another incident after that. They had, I think they, didn't they break a second, a different Not piece of? It was before. The when the lady in the red car had your dogs? It was before that. That was before that. I think that was. And, uh, I think that was fence. after. But let me double check. What about the lady in the red car? They just yeah. On the later that month, on the 24th of June, um, an individual had called in from the post office saying that one of her officer or her officers, one of her um, employees, was. What is? It? Sorry said they were going after the mail lady, called in by the post office, nothing further to log. Um, when I got there, an individual already had them in her vehicle, two of the dogs. The third dog had gone actually back into the fence. Um, at this point in time, I had contact information for him just due to the first bite incident that we did have. Um, I tried to get a hold of him. He was at work. Dispatch tried to get a hold of him as, at well, as well. He was at work, so he couldn't answer the phone. Um, I took the dogs to the Humane Society. Uh, his Yorkie and two of his shepherds, Leah and Diesel, were the ones that were taken down to the shelter at that time. He did claim them once he got off work. Um, so, I mean, there has been incidents where he's not available to contain the dogs. Um, I will just say that. Um, those were two incidents where he wasn't home. He has since fixed the fence, like I said, and I haven't had any other issues with them being loose at any point in time after that. Um, when I did a follow-up at his residence, uh, fence is secure. He took me through the whole backyard, everything like that. So he does have a secure fence now. Um, I don't know what it will be like in the future. So on, on June, June uh, 9th, 2016, it says that the 54-year-old male was bit on his arm while picking cherries on his property. Is that on his property or on his, on the on neighbor's the individual's property? On the individual's property, yeah. He's got a cherry tree, like, um, pretty much on the boulevard almost, um, and he was just out there. Okay. He didn't realize that the dogs were loose. After the two bites, was the dog checked for rabies? So after any bite, regardless, um, if they have a rabies vaccine or not, um, they are required to be quarantined. So the purpose of the quarantine is to ensure that the, that the dog or cat or whatever it is does not have rabies. Um, that's a state law that the animal be confined in some way. Um, the first bite, his dog was current on a rabies vaccine. Uh, the second time, our most recent one, he had just expired that month. I believe, or the, the month previous. Um, he completed his quarantine for the second time and he updated that rabies vaccine. That is a state law. So I always require people to do that. And then at that point, you're, if you fail to do that, you're issued a citation. <clears throat> so two, two strikes and they're out, basically? Uh, pretty much, um, just because, I mean, strike three, do you want another person getting bit? No, no. Yeah. I yeah, so, and I Asking. believe that's the way it's written. It written. Yeah, it's, it's, that's the way it's written. It's, um, it actually says one or more persons or animals. Um, so most of the time, generally speaking, most bites are usually an accident. So to say someone's dog is vicious after one time, I don't think that that's appropriate. Um, you just have to look at each case 
individually kind of um so you know if a child was mauled or something the first time obviously you're gonna do that you know rather than scruffy the pet dog you know he nipped the kid in the face because he fell on his bed while he was sleeping you know the dog bed i mean that's a little bit different so what is your opinion then what is my opinion um is the dog vicious my opinion is i understand that this individual loves their their pet and it's like family i i understand that wholeheartedly i feel the same way about my pets as well um but at, from a professional standpoint i do think that it could more issues could arise from this and i wouldn't want it falling back on me or the city saying well they didn't do anything this is the third bite and you know i take my job seriously um so i don't think it's fair to punish other people and you know with those same rules in place and not punish others i wouldn't say punish because that's a bad word <laughs> but um i just i don't i don't think a third person should have to pay the price for a dog that might not be stable okay thank you brett can you refresh my memory and what triggers the posting of a vicious dog on the or do they still do that it's in the city code. I, can, I mean, I can't quote it for you, but I'm, we can look it up. Did something like this trigger that? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I think that's mine. Totally. I did turn it off earlier. Okay. Um, chirp, chirp. Yeah, it gets louder than that. Again, I can't quote it, but it does say if there's two bites, like she said, we have to get rid of the dog out of the city limits. And obviously that's you guys' decision. So, upon appeal, <laughs> and we we made other people get rid of their dogs. So, and everybody's got their chance to appeal. Where is the dog now? So, yeah, as far as we know, he has complied with that part of it. It'd just be the one dog that would have to find a new home. Right. I think Diesel's his name. Yeah. Any other questions? Would you like to say anything, sir? Briefly, I just uh, uh, I do have uh, paperwork from the AKC that he uh, he was his his breeding is not of a vicious and he's been temp tempered paper tempered paperwork or whatever and uh, he I mean, he he is a, a notable line, lineage from. I don't know if anybody knows Rin Ten. He is a direct descendant of that dog from, for, actually from Germany or whatnot. So, I mean, the the classified diesel is this this dog from this lineage to be he he, he will have to be put down because he'll he won't be able to be put in any other home from the AKC. AKC. I'm sorry, he won't be able to be put he, in. The AKC will not uh, put him back into another home. I, I mean, from, from, from him being, to change his paperwork and everything, and then he had to, to, to say that he's a vicious animal from changing their, their views and their well, point of view. I wouldn't tell the dog the AKC is. <laughs> that might be the solution. <laughs> right. Right, but I mean, he, he won't tell the dog for uh, for his breeding for purposes pressure. or records. Sure. You know, I mean, all the all other dogs that I've 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 given out from his from from his litter, or would all be tainted, you know. Sure. So it's 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 kind of tricky. Any further questions or comments, Council? Thank you for coming tonight. Excuse me. Thank you oh, for coming. Thank you. Just to remind the council, historically, either council takes affirmative action to um, grant the appeal or uh, no action uh, uh, has been affirmation uh, of the order. And the penalty, um, if convicted, is a misdemeanor subject to a 65 up to $625 fee for failure to follow the uh, city code. So he, up to this point, he, well, he has, has followed, followed city code. Yes. He has removed the animal yes. from the city. Yes. So Fa failure to follow code. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
I personally am not in, not inclined to. And 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 my my kids have dogs. They never had kid pets at home, but they all have animals. They love their animals, but if they bite, they bite. And I I, I can't uh, acknowledge to allow him back, back into the city of Muscatine and take another chance. <clears throat> Just my opinion. <clears throat> Greg, since we've talked about this and supposing we allowed it back into the city and he does bite a third time or maybe whatever, does that open us up to legal issues? I'll turn that over to Mr. Brick. You don't own the dog, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. They can't clean it. Well, the city allowed me. Someone can, I mean, anyone can sue anyone at any time for any reason, but in terms of a legitimate lawsuit, it's not a legitimate lawsuit because you have the authority here to decide whether or not you think uh, this dog should be given one more chance or not. And uh, it'd be very difficult for your decision here tonight to be challenged or the basis of another lawsuit. The liability always lies with the homeowner. <clears throat> That's all we have for tonight. So there won't be any decision made tonight on this. Thank you again for coming. We appreciate it. Your Honor, just Do you want to go ahead? Just to clarify. Sure. Historically, the council either has taken affirmative action to grant an appeal. Or Failure to take action is, a, is affirmation uh -huh. uh, of the order. So. Or you, you could certainly take affirmative action to confirm the order that'd be up to council I think it's a tough one but I guess yeah. I'll defer to the our professionals opinion in, in a real close I mean it's hard to decide here for me what others are thinking I I have to agree I think what was difficult for me was the two within less than one year you know I I reached out to mr. Sergosa prior to this and I think he does clearly love his dog and it's difficult to decision for us but it's also the the reality of there's two bites within one year is firmly acknowledged that the dog does bite and that's difficult as much as you may love the dog it's difficult for us to be able to approve that in my opinion and then taking you know our staff's opinion is also important for me so I'm sorry but I can't agree with that anyone else Greg do we need to take action in the form of a motion or just a consensus or uh, historically just uh, uh, the council has, has chosen to either take affirmative action a motion to grant an appeal or uh, typically just uh, lack of a lack of a motion or failure to failure to make a motion um, has affirmed the uh, action taken by the police department so the you could certainly you could certainly take affirmative action the failure of us to make a decision means the removal it, order would Stands. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't hear a motion for us to allow it to be overturned. So we'll stay there. We're going to move on with tonight's agenda to the consent agenda. Item number five. The following items are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a Council member so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes items 6A, items 8A through D, Items 12A through B, and tonight's bills totaling five million four hundred and forty thousand eight hundred and sixty-three dollars and sixty-nine cents. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. We're going to move on down to 11A. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution accepting certain tax delinquent real estate from Muscatine County. This triangle-shaped piece of property located adjacent to Iowa Field has been delinquent on taxes for over six years. 
Muscatine County has reached out to the city to deed this real estate to the city for final disposition. This property may have a future benefit to the city for storm water control. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Second. Second. We have Allen and Santos. Any discussion? Hearing none. Councilman Raywalt, how do you vote? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Natvig? Aye. Spread? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Saucedo? Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes. 11B. Presented for City Council's consideration as a resolution relating to the financing of certain proposed projects to be undertaken by the city and establishing compliance with reimbursement bond regulations under the Internal Revenue Code. The IRS requires that cities identify projects that may be financed in whole or in part through the issuance of general obligation bonds. Bids have been received on several of the projects to be funded in whole or in part from the city's next bond issue scheduled for the spring of 2018. The potential local share for the new library renovation or other CAT, which is Community Attractions and Tourism grant projects, have been increased to up to $400,000 and have been included as part of this resolution. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Scott, second, second Phil. No. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, Councilman Sacedo, how do you vote? Aye. Spread? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Raywalt? Aye. And Natvig? Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes. 11C. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution committing future bond proceeds to the Pearls of Progress project. On July 14th of 2017, the city and county jointly submitted a grant application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority, or IEDA, for a $1 million community attraction and tourism program grant funding for the Pearls of Progress project. The IEDA is requesting a more specific commitment towards using $400,000 of future bond proceeds for this project. This resolution would only commit the city to using bond proceeds for this project if the CAT grant is successful and all components of the projects are fully funded. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> <coughs> Hearing none, Councilman Sacedo, how do you Aye. vote? <coughs> Spread? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Natvig? Aye. And Raywalt? Aye. 11D. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution authorizing the submittal of an application to the Iowa Department of Transportation for Traffic Safety Improvement Program, TSIP. Funding for this reconfigura reconfiguration of the intersection at West Fulham Avenue and North Hauser Street. The city, in cooperation with Shive Hattery, would like to submit an application to 2TSIP for this intersection. This grant requires no match from the city and could, could potentially fund this project as well as the project being presented in the following resolution. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? When would we know if we got it? This is for a stoplight. Uh, do, do you recall the timeline? Thanks. We configure the intersection. Timeline. Council. Um, applications are due August 15th. The projected awards are will be sent out in December and funds will be available July 1, 2018. Thank you, Brian. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Harvey, how do you vote? Aye. Spread? Aye. Raywalt? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Sacedo? Aye. And Natvig? Aye. <clears throat> the resolution is adopted with all ayes. 11E, 
presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution authorizing the submittal of an application to the Iowa Department of Transportation for Traffic Safety Improvement Program funding for the reconfiguration of Business Highway 38 and Park Avenue from Harrison Street to the Iowa 92 Bridge. The City, in cooperation with Shive Hattery, would like to submit an application to TSIP for this reconfiguration. This grant requires no match from the city and could potentially fund this project <clears throat> as well as the project being presented in the previous resolution. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Raywalt, how do you vote? Aye. Nat Big? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Spread? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Saucedo? Aye. <clears throat> Resolution is adopted with all ayes. 11F. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution setting a public hearing on a request to vacate and dispose of the Lakeview right of way and certain utility and drainage easements in lots 7 and 8 of the Northport Commons subdivision. Beaver Builders Incorporated has filed a combined preliminary final plat for the Muscatine Landing subdivision a 28.4 acre, 28 acre four lot subdivision on the north side of Northport Drive. In order to accommodate the proposed subdivision, this right of way and certain drainage and utility easements must first be vacated and the right of way deeded back to the adjoining property owner. Prior to any formal action by City Council, a public hearing is required. This hearing will take place on Thursday, August 17th at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Second. Any discussion? So what are we doing with the drainage <clears throat> area that's going through there now? While they're on their way up, this is one of three housing or potential housing projects that, this, that are uh, Maybe coming before the city council in the near future. If you remember, Harrison, um, Harrison, Harrison Loss, Loss. Uh, Miller Valentine was awarded tax credits last year, along with tax increment financing. Uh, we have two potential senior housing projects, and then a market rate program uh, that'll be coming forward at future meetings for uh, more in-depth discussion on those projects and their requests. But Andy, um, so, so in regards to the drainage easement, they're going to pipe it underground as part of the subdivision they're putting in. So oversize the pipe? Yes. Um, oh, Jim, you can get <laughs> it. It's only one other location in, in Muscatine that I'm currently aware of where they actually run a, a pipe underneath the building. No, it wouldn't be under a building. This will not be under a building, though. Uh, Mayor, Council, no, it will not be underneath the building. Uh, Andrew and I have been working with this uh, uh, developer, and they are going to put in storm sewer and route it through a portion of this development, and then the rest of it will be via open channel uh, flow in a ditch. But by far and away, the most important thing for you guys to realize is even though they're abandoning this drainage easement, not only will there be a guarantee that this will be storm sewered and ditched to where it belongs, but even if all of that system were to plug, there's an emergency overland flow route identified in the subdivision that will handle this water so that it doesn't flood any of these buildings or anything else to the fullest extent that you can predict such a thing. I mean, uh, it, it, it is a very, 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 very important thing to make sure that when you uh, mess with a drainage uh, area like this or, or drainage dish or anything like that, that you don't just rely on storm sewer to carry it because we can end up with a storm with the hail that knocked all the leaves off, that plugged all the inlets, and then an event like that. So it's not only is the what you would anticipate every day is handled, but also when those storm sewers plug, there's an emergency overland flow route that's identified already in the plans um, to handle that. But it's so, not identified on this little map we have here that's showing the um, right-of-way vacation and the 
There's a detention basin for it too then I see. I'm I am not aware of what map you're looking at. So have you got it? Yeah. Somebody got it? Geographical. And, <laughs> Andrew's got it on there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they were attached. On, 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 the, on, the, on the subdivision plat, it, it, it's there. So th there is no detention basin yeah, right now. That all drains down to a lake. The, the current situation is, yeah, is, is the north side it's of Northport, which is like Unity Point Clinic it's made right and stuff, goes across the road and goes into a ditch. They're going to put that in pipe and move it over about 20 feet. To so this, this detention basin is clerical air of some sort? It, it, goes, it all flows down to the, there's a lake. About 300 okay. feet further down, that it all flows in, that whole area flows into. Okay. This is just the conveyance to that chain okay. a little bit. And you're both fine with this? Absolutely. Thank you. Hearing no other discussion, Councilman Spread, how do you vote? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Sacedo? Aye. Natvig? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. And Raywall? <clears throat> Aye. The resolution is adopted with all ayes. 11G, presented for City Council's consideration, is a request to purchase a suspended solids meter for dredge solids application for the water pollution control plant. Three bids were received for this meter with the low bid from Markland Specialty Engineering in the amount of $8,981. There's $10,000 budgeted for this item. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No, just a quick question. I don't know if we were. When he's applying the sludge, does he use GPS to tr track his progress across the field? So that he knows where he's been, and et cetera? Actually, yes, they do. They actually mark that um, every year so they can go back and see where the solids have been applied and how much is there. And this meter will help us tell how much is we're actually putting on. It's kind of a spitball right now. We take, take a sample in the morning and, uh, and the rest of it, we kind of just eyeball it, you know, by how much is going to go on. So we need this to be more accurate about how much we can actually put on because we're not putting on as much as we can. And once we start getting more solids in for the next project, then we're going to need to be able to apply as many solids as we possibly can to that land. Does a spitball have any solids in it? Well, it's a taste <laughs> test, yeah. The taste test on it's uh, more accurate than anything else, generally. <laughs> John, while you're up there, can you comment on the wide disparity between the top bid and the low bid? They're really proud of that meter they had on the other one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not even as rugged. This is, this is more of an industrial application for the top bid. And the one that we found, we really had to go to the oil and gas industry to find it. And these things are built to be beat up which is where this thing will be it's going to be submerged it's going to be in a bad place and this the, the ten thousand dollar the eight thousand dollar one was was really the best meter for the job the other one couldn't even go underwater so it's like i don't know it's hard to find these meters to go to 15 percent solids they just they really don't make them very money so thank you john yep. we appreciate it it ought to be waterproof <laughs> or all solid in favor say aye. 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 aye aye opposed the request is approved with all ayes. 11H, presented for City Council's consideration, is the request for the issuance of a purchase order for a new ambulance. Three bids were received with the lowest responsible bid from Foster Coach in the amount of $154,740. Staff is requesting City Council authorize the issuance of a purchase order to Foster Coach for a 2018 Ford E450 Medics ambulance. There is $155,000 budgeted for this purchase. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Any discussion? Will Chief. this have soft right air springs on it? That's, I'm going there with that same question. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't ridden in the cot in the ambulance, you can't appreciate the ride. <clears throat> I can try to drive better. <laughs> there, this is probably the biggest complaint that we get. It's not about patient care. It's not about other things with the ambulance service. The, the majority of the time when we talk to people or we get an email or a phone call, it's, it's about the bumpy ride. I can um, appreciate that. <laughs> there's, there's really, we could spend an extra $20,000 and get a different type of ambulance, but I've spoke with 
and these would be more of a, a custom type ambulance. Uh, but when I talk to services that use them, they still get complaints on the ride. I mean, if you're on a backboard or if you're on a cot going down the road, it's, it's not going to be the most comfortable ride. Uh, so again, I don't think, um, I don't think it has a lot of value for us to put 20,000 extra dollars on the cost of an ambulance when at least I'm being told that will not solve, uh, solve the problem of having a bumpy ride in an ambulance. Well, this is not a limo ride. <laughs> This, hopefully, by the time they get to where they need to take you, or the person, you guys take them, yeah. that they're still alive. That should be the number one yeah. issue. Patient pa Patient care, care keeping them comfortable, uh, yeah. pain, pain meds. Uh, those are a lot of things that we try to do. But uh, when it comes to the suspension, again, our, our staff, uh, our internal mechanics do a great job on the maintenance of the vehicles with the springs and the leafs and, and all the maintenance stuff that we have to do on it. But where they're just not going to create or make a, an ambulance that is going to give you a hundred percent guarantee that no one's going to complain that it <laughs> that they had uh, uh, a terrible ride or that they had a great ride so we do the best we can with what we have but again in my opinion i don't think it's worth the money to spend an extra twenty thousand dollars on top of what we're spending for an ambulance because we're still going to get those same complaints yeah I, the Jim, ones called including bob bynum i mean vociferous complaints about the ride and a you know, buckboard kind of a, he's, a trip. He's still here, though. Uh, well, we don't know. Well, he's still <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Now, I have a question, <laughs> Chief. How okay. many medics manufacturer ones do we have now? Uh, this will be our second one. Second. Yeah, all, all the ones that we had before were all the med techs, and uh, they quit making them. And so uh, that's they've been the, the lowest bid that, that meets spec. So as long as they continue, I'm assuming that's probably uh, what we'll end up getting in the, in the future. But it's easier for the mechanic uh, having the same type of ambulance with the same parts. Yeah. So, but. Chief, is that going to be a problem when you get some of them rebuilt if this outfit went out of business? Uh, no, uh, because the maintenance on them, I mean, those, the majority of those are out of, out of warranty, so it's not really an, an issue. And so we purchase an ambulance every other year. Uh, and so this will be our second new ambulance. The other three ambulances that we have, you got to realize they're a combination. They're a new chassis, and then they're, they're the rebuild or the refurb cab where they take the box off of it and put it back on. You can only take a box off an ambulance and put it on a new chassis once. And so that's why uh, the next three purchases after this one will be new ambulances. Uh, and then at that point, we'll look at, does it still make sense to do the refurb, take the old box off and put mm -hmm. it on a new chassis? Um, it's always made sense in the past uh, because of the cost savings, but we've really seen the cost increase on the refurbs. And what I'm told is that a lot of the, the ambulance vendors, they don't want to mess with the, the refurbs. They'd rather just build it from the ground up. So we're would. seeing the cost of the refurbs uh, being almost uh, close to the cost of a new. So um, we have, well, we buy an ambulance every other year. So, I mean, we have three more purchases. So six years out, we would be looking at if it would still be cost effective to start refurbing these new ones or if we just look at buying new ones. But uh, that will be six years from now. The uh, manufacturers of the carts, for lack of a better word, they haven't come up with any spring devices to help uh, cushion it at all. I guess I'm not sure what your question is. Is it on the, the, the cot, cot itself? Yeah, the cot. Oh, the cot. cot. Yeah. Uh, they, they actually have cot loading systems, uh, which would almost be like a Tommy lift. Uh, a lot of ambulance services are buying those to get them uh, in and out. Uh, but yeah, when you get into um, the shock absorbers or anything like that, you, I mean, they have the struts on them. But the, our cots, I mean, we have, we have good cots. So I don't think the, the cots are the issue. It's, it's more of the people will complain about the bumpy ride in the ambulance, so. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Council. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> the request is approved with all ayes. 11 aye. Presented for City Council's consideration is a request to approve the 2017-2018 deer hunt which will run from September 16th of 2017 through January 10th of 2018. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Second. 
Any discussion? All in favor say <coughs> aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. 11J. Presented for City Council's consideration is a request from Parks and Recreation for the purchase of two mowers. Three bids were received for a wide area mower with the low bid, for, low bid from TurfWorks in the amount of $10,500 for a used mower. Seven bids were received for a small area mower with the low bid from TurfWorks in the amount of $14,500 for a used mower. Staff is requesting that City Council approve the issuance of a purchase order to TurfWorks for these mower purchases. There's $30,000 budgeted <clears throat> for these purchases. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I'm just, I'm just happy that they managed to come up and they're going to try this using used product. At least, maybe. They've checked them out. Yep. They do the due diligence, and I hope it all works out. Otherwise, they'll be back. <laughs> Nick, are they run with PTO or how? These mowers on PTO? The little piece that runs on track. Both of these mowers are actually hydraulically uh, driven. That's good news. Thank you. Yep. While oh, you're up there, uh, those PTOs. It, it seems counterintuitive that the, the large mower costs less and the small mowers can you yep and actually the large mower is a 2007 and it actually has 1900 hours on it where the uh smaller small area mower is a 2008 and it actually only has 988 hours to it so it has a, almost a thousand less hours to the smaller one than the larger one and that probably explains the, the difference in, in cost price. yep but they're both you're confident well yep we uh, we've checked both of you uh, pieces of equipment out and we also required the maintenance records for both of these mowers in order to purchase them. Thanks Nick. Thank you. Hearing no other discussion all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. 11K presented for City Council's <coughs> consideration is a request from Parks and Recreation for the purchase of a new utility vehicle. Five bids were received for a new utility vehicle with the low bid from Rexco in the amount of $16,527.24. There's $16,000 budgeted for this purchase. The remaining balance can be funded from the mower purchases that came in $5,000 under budget. Staff is requesting that City Council approve the issuance of a purchase order to Rexco for this purchase. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. 11L. Presented for City Council's <clears throat> consideration is a request from Parks and Recreation for the purchase of soccer goals. The soccer complex is in need of additional small soccer goals in order to be in compliance with the Iowa Soccer Association guidelines when small and medium fields are used. Staff is requesting that City Council approve the purchase of four sets of small soccer goals in the amount of $10,475. <clears throat> this request is not budgeted or not funded in our current budget. However, the cost will be covered by the insurance reimbursement for damages at the soccer complex during the storm that took place in March of 2017. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. 11M. Presented for City Council's consideration is a request from the Police Department for the purchase of two Panasonic touch, Tough Pad computers. Three bids were received with the low bid from Caltech Incorporated in the amount of $5,137.44. There is $7,000 budgeted for this purchase. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Second. Second. 
Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. 11N. We have a request to accept the city staff and city council's audit committee responses to the state's re-audit report. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Second? Second. Santos? Yep. Any discussion? All in favor say uh, aye. I, I have some comments I'd okay. like to make here. Um, spend a fair amount of time reading the information. And last month marked my 40th anniversary in the banking business. And in that period of time, I've literally uh, reviewed and responded to hundreds of audits, reviews, exams. And I, I just, this disturbs me because I've never seen a report that said so little and cost so much. The, the thought that, that taxpayers spent over $8,000 to talk about $4,000 in expenditures, not to mention another $2,200 worth of soft times from city staff, I just think this was a disservice. Uh, I know that in April of 2016, the mayor filed an anonymous complaint and it took over a year to complete the audit process and quite honestly, I think that's because it was so inconsequential. It was not a priority. Just recently, the mayor gave interviews to local media where she indicated her purpose was to respond to unanswered questions of concerned citizens. Well, any citizen inquiry falls within the realm of the Freedom of Information Act, and the city has a complete set of administrative rules to make sure that there's an accurate and timely response. So I checked with the city's administrator's office. There is no record of anyone ever having asked for this information. There is no record of the mayor having asked for this information. Rather, a complaint was filed with the auditor's office. Uh, it just seems to me that the whole exercise was, was just a huge waste of time and resources. And in that interview with local media, the mayor indicated that this was an issue of transparency. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, I would point out that this city administrator and this council just recently rolled out something called open.gov. It's on the front page of our website. It allows everybody to see the financial uh, dealings of the city. <clears throat> it will take some time, but there will be more complete information out there. I do have a concern that financial information in, in the hands of someone that's not fully informed will result in misunderstanding, but we're just going to have to learn how to deal with that and explain everything to everybody. As far as the trip to China goes, uh, that matter was well publicized. Uh, we all knew about it uh, back in 2012, 2014, there was a 19-page written document that explained the entire China initiative. That's always been available. Uh, and for the audit to suggest that there should have been a public hearing prior to the trip is ludicrous. I mean, if you apply that logic, every time someone, the mayor, or the city administrator, or a county representative, anytime somebody gets in the car to go to the Quad Cities to a regional bi-state meeting, we'd have to have a public hearing. That, that just makes no sense. So, uh, and and fi my final concern is or con question is maybe one day the mayor will explain the logic of filing an anonymous complaint in the name of transparency. And that's all I have to say. Thanks. Mayor, do you have any comment on filing anonymous comments or questions on in the interest of transparency? Those are your words. I won't be baited into discussing this tonight but I did have some comments already prepared based on the subject for the evening. I did not make an anonymous complaint. I fully identified myself when I asked my question. And before I ever called them, I did inquire with the city administrator about the trips and then with the city attorney about the trips and then with the ombudsman before it ever went to audit. That's my final statement on that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. Moving down to number 14 
on tonight's agenda. Communication from council members. Councilman Spread, do you have anything tonight? Nothing this evening. Councilman Harvey. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Councilman Natvig. Uh, yes, I was able to attend the soccer tournament, or parts of it, last Saturday. And I was <clears throat> really impressed with the, the condition of the fields. And I mean, we all know how, how good they are all the time anyway, but they were just, and I heard a lot of comments from people from Chicago, St. Louis, Minneapolis, saying the same thing. And also overheard, uh, I guess it was a group of parents from Chicago, they'd been downtown the night before and they were telling people from another big city because their opponents, although in that tournament it really wasn't a tournament to win, it was more scouts, college scouts. And they were talking about all the neat, unique restaurants and things downtown, and it was just uh, very encouraging me, to me to hear somebody from outside of town uh, saying such uh, complimentary things about our, 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 our downtown and our city. They mentioned in, you know, a Mexican restaurant, an Italian restaurant, a good place to get breakfast, and they went on and on. It was just a good thing to hear. Thank you, Scott. Councilman Saucedo. Um, recently, in this last week, I think we've had a number of different shootings. No. And we want to, I want to be able to thank the staff that was being able to address Available. those shootings quickly. And I know that there's been a lot of uh, challenges with the community involved in pointing fingers. And I think one of the biggest things for me is I think our staff from the police force and this and the SWAT team was able to address those issues right away. I think that from my personal opinion, I think the family's involved. There's been a lot of pain. There's, a, there's mental illnesses in some of these um, citizens that were affected by that. The, the neighborhood was affected very much so. So I think it's, it's quickly to, to assume things, but please don't. I think the, in every case, the, the person that had the that had been involved was arrested and you know we're, we're following up with with that and I appreciate the staff and the work that they do I think people are quick to jump to conclusions and I want to be able to communicate to Brett and your teams for all the work that you guys have done and <clears throat> pray for the families that are involved in that I think uh, it's it's hard to go through some of those things and I know personally the families that are involved in some of those so that's all I have Thank you. Councilman Fitzgerald. Uh, I, I too run into a, a soccer family <laughs> downtown at a restaurant. Uh, this one was from actually from Minnesota and they raved about our soccer complex. He, they had, the parents and the kids said that this is the best complex that they played on. They play in Chicago, Minnesota, all over, mid, all over the Midwest. Uh, and he did have one he was wondering how how the staff had uh, did the concentric circles so perfectly on <laughs> one field, which I had to then go down and check out. But um, <clears throat> it's it's nice being able to talk to somebody that you obviously I I had no clue who they were, uh, but raving about the community and the and the complex that we have. So thank you, Parks and Rec. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Yeah, staff. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. I just had a couple of things. I had a lovely uh, talk with a lady, Mrs. Patterson, from out of town who came to Muscatine just to experience our labyrinth at the Arboretum and the great work that Braden Currier did a few years ago creating that and had nothing but praises for how wonderful it is. And she is highly trained in this area and was very, very impressed. And, and wanted uh, kudos to go out to everybody involved for what a great project and a great site that is. Uh, next, I would just like to remind everybody that in August there is no in-depth meeting, so there will not be a city council meeting next week. We will now take a brief recess while we move into closed session. Thank you, everyone, for coming.